to format numbers in the worksheet. Excel allows you to apply various number formats. The following steps use buttons on the ribbon to format the numbers in the worksheet. Select the range B4 to N4. In your numbers group, select the accounting number format button. Select the range B5 to N5. This time, select the comma style. Select B6 to N6, and I'm actually going to zoom out just a little bit for y'all. Hmm. Yeah, I did that right. Okay. <laughs> And then select C6, B6, sorry, B6 to N6, and then apply the accounting style again. Very good. All right, now we're gonna format B9 to N9, B17 to N17, and B19 to N19 with the accounting number format. I'm gonna hit Control and then select B17 to N17, and again, the Control button to select the 19 to N19. And I'm going to select that accounting number format button. Now for the rest of it, B10 to N16, I'm going to select the comma style format. And apply comma style. And I left out this little guy in there. There we go. Make sure that one's got the comma style. Good. Okay. Excel offers other methods for adjusting cell widths and row heights. To adjust the column width, point to the boundary on the right side of the column heading A above row 1 to change the pointer to a split double arrow. Some of these months you cannot read, so we need to change that. So I can double click, and now I can see entertainment and car payment and miscellaneous. Before I could not. So when you double click, it provides the Excel width, uh, the column width to be adjusted automatic, automatically to the longest width. Now, I want to do this for the rest of the columns, so I'm going to go ahead, oops, I'm going to go ahead and, sorry, select all of my columns, B through N, and it doesn't matter where, I'm just going to pick in between any two and just double click. And now they each automatically adjust to the widest width for each column. So they're not, all the columns are not the same width. I can move over here to J, in between J and K, and I see it's 13.71. But if I move between F and G, it's only 9.86. So they're not all the same size. They just automatically adjust to the, to the size that fits that column. You, If you don't want to do it automatically, you can click and drag however you want. 
And if I don't like that, I can double click and it'll put it back. You can also do the same with your rows. So let's say I wanted to make all the rows from 9 to 16 be 18.75. I highlight them all and then I move them all to that size. And I'm going to click undo. I just wanted you to see you can do it individually, you can do it together, you can highlight all and do it automatically, and they'll all automatically go to the correct size. To use the name box to select a cell, click the name box in the formula bar and then type A3. So here's your name box, and I'm going to type A3. Press your enter key. There we go. It takes you straight to that cell. So let's say I have a very large Excel worksheet and I'm, I want to go to triple, oops, sorry. Let's say I am on page ZZZ34, cell ZZZ34. Oh, I have to be over there. Okay, I'm not going to go all the way to ZZZ. But let's say I'm in cell, I want to get to 1Z. Okay, let's say I'm in cell ZY. And now I know I need to get that to cell A3. So I can hit enter, and let's say I want to go back to ZY22. I can type ZY22 and it takes me back over there, okay? So let me get me back to one, A1, and it takes me back. Adding a pie chart to the worksheet. Excel includes 15 chart types from which you can choose, including column, line, pie, bar, area, scatter, stock, surface, radar, tree map, sunburst, histogram, box and whisker, waterfall, and combo. The type of chart you choose depends on the type and quantity of data you have and the message or analysis you want to convey. For this module, we'll be using a 3D pie chart. Adding a 3D pie chart. Select the range A9 to A16. While holding down your control key, select the non-adjacent range N9 to N6, not N16. Click insert on the ribbon to display the insert tab. Click the Insert Pie or Donut Chart button to display the Insert Pie or Donut Chart Gallery. And select 3D Pie. Click and drag to select all the text in the chart title. Or you can just triple click, type Monthly Expenses. and then deselect the chart title to view the new title. Click the Chart Styles button, which is this little paintbrush, to display the Chart Styles gallery. Scroll in the Chart Style gallery to display the Style 5 chart. Click Style 5 in the Chart Styles Gallery to change the chart. So I've already done that when I clicked on it. Click the Chart Styles button to close the Chart Styles Gallery. So you can quickly open and close by clicking. Changing the Sheet Tab Names. 
The sheet tabs at the bottom of the window allow you to navigate between any worksheet in the workbook. You click the sheet tab of the worksheet you want to view in the Excel window. By default, the worksheets are named Sheet 1, Sheet 2, and so on. The worksheet names become increasingly important as you move towards sophisticated workbooks, especially workbooks in which you reference cells between worksheets. To move a chart to a new sheet, click the Move Chart button to display the Move Chart dialog box. Click New Sheet to select it. And then type Monthly Expense Chart. Click the OK button. This moves the chart to a new chart sheet with the sheet tab name Monthly Expense Chart. To change the sheet tab name, you decide to change the name of the sheet tab 1 to Monthly Finances. Double click Sheet Tab 1 and type Monthly, wow, <laughs> Monthly Finances. and deselect it by clicking anywhere. Now let's go back into monthly finances. I want you to right click, point to tab color, click a color that matches your shirt. And mine is black. You'll notice if I click off of this tab back onto our monthly expense chart, that now that tab, you can see it is, is quite dark. When I move on the tab, it's kind of um, lightened there. You can also move these tabs. Let me click on monthly expense chart and hold down your left mouse button, and you'll see a little piece of paper. I can move it to after monthly finances and release. And now I have my monthly finances first and monthly expense chart second. To change the page layout, just as in Microsoft Word, you would go to the Page Layout tab and select whether you want Portrait, which is up and down, or you want Landscape, which is across. You can go in the View tab and select Page Break Preview. Currently, you can see all the pages we have. We've got tons and tons of pages because I went all the way over to ZY22. So currently, we will print on two pages. I'm going to select Page Layout and change it to Landscape. And then I just personally like to look at the Page Break Preview. If I want this all to fit on one page, I can drag this dotted line over and release. Um, when I do that, it's going to print very tiny. Okay, But right now, we can just have it printing on two pages for right now. So again, you can drag to the end and it will all it will put it all on one page. Um, so this is one way you can do that. Let's go back into File, Print, and you'll see it will be on one of 55 pages because I have marked in that last page. Um, so what I want you to do is click on No Scaling and Fit Sheet on one page. And mine is going to be teensy, teensy tiny because I went all the way to that ZY um, page. So if I want it all to fit on one page and not be six pages of teeny tiny or be hundreds of pages, uh, what was it, 55 pages, what I'm going to have to do is go find where I marked on that last page. Um, so you can fit it all to one if you want to. Um, you do not have to. I wanted you to see, it doesn't matter if your page is not 55 pages, as long as you understand, you can come in here and do fit all on one page, or you can use the page break preview.